Today I'm going to explore how intermittent fasting helps with brain function and in particular dementia and the most common Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is a term used to describe a range of symptoms in brain function that includes memory loss, problem solving and communication difficulties and personality and behavioural changes. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Amies and I'm your intermittent fasting coach and mentor. I'm in my 50s and I feel slim, healthy, vibrant and most importantly alive. Please subscribe to my channel and keep watching because I want to teach you how to feel this way too. Most people think that Alzheimer's is a, is a disease that affects people in their mid 60s and over. But PET scans show it's already in early stage development as young as people in their late 20s and 30s. And as we know, it's an age related disease and only gets worse with age. So what does this mean? It means that we need to start addressing it way earlier than we think. The WHO, the World Health Organization, predicts that by 2050, the rate of Alzheimer's will have tripled. And a study by the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation predicts that by the year 2050, 153 million people around the world will be living with Alzheimer's. What scientists are now saying is Alzheimer's is optional. It should be a rare disease, not a common disease. And we can start actively taking preventative action as early in our 40s. Unfortunately, women have a much greater risk of developing Alzheimer's than men and studies have shown they are twice as likely to get Alzheimer's as men. This is horrifying for women and one of the reasons that women are twice as likely to get Alzheimer's than men is because Alzheimer's is an age-related disease and women in general are living much longer than men. Other factors for getting dementia is uh, biology, menstruation, menopause, pregnancy, lifestyle, work and education and underlying medical conditions. Women in the past you know, notoriously stayed longer at home. They had less education. So this is why more women now in their late 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond have got dementia than men. As it's believed mental stimulation delays dementia. Another important risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is genetics. Two thirds of people have at least one copy of the APOE4 gene, which people with this gene have generally poor fat metabolism and naturally high cholesterol. So we now know that the genes we carry are influenced by our diet. So if we change our diet, we can reduce our risk of getting Alzheimer's. Good thing we now know is Alzheimer's is an option and should be a rarity and we can prevent it. With Alzheimer's, it's usually the long-term memory that stays and the short-term memory that doesn't form properly or disappears. Some ways to check if you think you might be getting early onset Alzheimer's disease is to start noticing if you're feeling different in some way. All usual things you remember like names and phone numbers, you're now sometimes struggling to remember. And the good thing to know is if you are seeing any signs of brain dysfunction, early onset dementia or Alzheimer's, you usually have a 10 year window to do something about it, to take active prevention. So this is really great news because you can stop it. This 10 year window is called the SCI phase, the subjective cognitive impairment. Now I'll show you how intermittent fasting play such a key role in slowing and preventing dementia. The most recent studies today on intermittent fasting are actually focusing on brain related diseases such as Alzheimer's and dementia. Alzheimer's and dementia pose the greatest threat to brain health and the fantastic news is that this research is now showing that intermittent fasting is proving to actively help. So far, most of the studies on intermittent fasting and brain health have been done on mice. And the reason mice have been chosen is that mice have the most similar DNA to humans and they actually get very similar diseases to humans like uh, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, 
and brain dysfunction. So research on mice has been particularly successful in helping scientists understand human diseases and in particular brain function. Scientists use brain imaging on mice because their brains resemble something very closely to the human brain and they can learn a lot about human diseases and how to treat them. And new studies in mice show that intermittent fasting with mice can increase their lifespan by up to 35 percent. Another study done with mice over a four-year period had groups of mice where one group could eat whatever they wanted whenever they wanted and they lived the average age of a mouse which is 800 days. In the same study over four years another group of mice were given a calorie restricted diet and they lived 875 days on average. Mice are different to humans in the fact that they're nocturnal animals and they're most active at night. So in this control group study over four years of the mice, these mice were only fed in the evenings to do the exact mimicking of humans eating in the day. These mice that did intermittent fasting and that were only controlled fed in the evenings within the window of time of the evening lived the longest and lived 1,068 days, which means their lifespan was extended three times more than the mice on the calorie restricted diet. So what does this mean? It means that the timing of when we're reducing a calorie control diet is the most crucial factor in extending your lifespan. In mice that intermittent fast long term, it was also found it delayed the onset of cognitive impairment. And furthermore, it constrains and protects the main neurons that degenerate in Alzheimer's disease. Recent studies in brain function have been focusing on harmful proteins in the brain, specifically amyloid beta. Amyloid beta accumulation can lead to the formation of plaques that affect communication in the brain between the brain cells. And that leads to cognitive decline and is one of the main symptoms in Alzheimer's. So studies using mice with accumulated amyloid beta in the brain and memory and learning problems, when they were put on an intermittent fasting diet, the results showed that it slowed down the accumulation of the amyloid and actually prevented it from forming further. The intermittent fasting in mice helped boost their brain power and health and it helped improve their learning and performance in mazes. And the intermittent fasting helped protect against brain cell death. So as well as studies in mice, there have been many studies on intermittent fasting on humans and how it affects human brain health and protects the brain against Alzheimer's and dementia by improving the cognitive process. Intermittent fasting increases neurotrophic factors. It increases stress resistance and reduces inflammation in the brain. When you fast, your energy metabolism starts to shift and you start to burn fats. When you eat, the energy is stored in the liver and is stored in the form of glycogen, which your body uses first for fuel. It takes about 10 to 12 hours to deplete these glycogen stores in the liver. And once you have depleted these stores, you start burning fat and start producing ketone bodies. These ketone bodies are very good for the brain because they provide an alternative fuel for the neurons that increase the energy levels in the neurons. Fasting can also increase the levels of mitochondria in the nerve cells. And this can result in increasing your learning and memory ability and also enhances the ability for your nerve cells to repair DNA. When you 16-8 intermittent fast, it challenges your brain because you're not giving your brain any food. And your brain activates adaptive stress response pathways and your nerve cell circuits are more active. This helps your brain cope better with stress and resist disease. Fasting clarifies thought and improves perceptive abilities because your brain is working much harder when it's not being fed and in the fasting state. Intermittent fasting is by no means a new concept and it's been around for thousands of years since ancient civilization and it's been adopted in many religions and cultures and it's still used all around the world and many families in India. 
And it's also been used by many famous people who are known for their brain life. Like Plato, who said, I fast for greater physical and mental efficiency. And the great mathematician Pythagoras also made his students fast before attending any of his classes, because they said if they didn't fast, they wouldn't be able to pick up what he was saying. So now we know that studies in mice and in humans has shown that intermittent fasting has a dramatic effect on our brain health and can clearly affect in preventing and producing Alzheimer's and dementia. And now we're going to look at the three most common types of intermittent fasting. I personally do the 16-8 uh, intermittent fasting, where I fast for 16 hours and eat in that eight hour window. So usually what you do with the 16-8 intermittent fasting is you miss breakfast, you have lunch around 12 and you eat between that 12 and eight hour window and then you fast until 12 o'clock the next day. And usually people find the 16-8 intermittent fasting is one of the best and most effective ways for intermittent fasting. It's also good to mix it up a bit. So sometimes have finished dinner by six and start eating again the next day by 10. And what I also do to mix it up, I try at least once a week to do a 20, to 24 hour fast. So I go fully into autophagy, which I've said um, helps eat all the old and damaged cells and helps give amazing mental and brain clarity. And which is very good if you're worried about any stages of um, Alzheimer's or getting Alzheimer's and dementia. Autophagy is derived from the Greek language and means self-eating. Also I do is every about three weeks, I try and do a longer fast, like a 36 hour fast. And I refer to this in one of my other videos that I'll put at the end of this video on what happens at each of the different stages of your fast when you fast for eight hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, 20 hours. 36 hours and the benefits of increasing a fast and it's really good just to once every few weeks just take that fast out a little bit longer and see how fantastic you feel i went out the other night with some friends and i'd actually hadn't eaten for over 24 hours and everyone was sitting there drinking and i think they thought i was drunk because i was just so high on actual just being in my own body and I felt so alive and great. And when my drink finally did come, I didn't even feel like drinking it because I was having a better time just on the high of the not eating and the fast. So try that sometimes and it's you just feel euphoric. It, something just kicks in and you just, your whole body's rejuvenating. You're eating your old and damaged cells and you just feel absolutely amazing. You have amazing brain clarity, no brain fog. You feel really alive and fantastic. So just try that sometime. The second type of fasting is alternate day fasting, where you basically eat what you want on one day and fast on the next. A lot of people like that type of fasting. I personally, as I said, prefer the 16-8, where I can eat what I want in that eight hour window and fast for the 16 hours. And the third type of intermittent fasting is the 5-2 diet. Five days of the week, you eat a normal diet and for two days you either fast and you can choose any two days, they don't have to be consecutive, or you can reduce the calories. Women should reduce the calories to about 500 calories during those days of fasting and men seven around 700 calories. Personally, I think it's better to actually have no calories. But if you do find that too difficult, try and restrict those 500 calories to one meal. Don't spread it throughout the day. You can, but I find it's better if you want to get the full benefits of fasting to confine those in that just one eating window. So you're just really having one meal a day on two days of the week and the other five you're eating what you want. It's good to play around with it and try what fasting works best for you. Whether it's alternative day, intermittent with the 16, eight or 24 or with the five, two. So play around with it and see which works best for you because everyone's different and everybody's diff body's different. The one thing I have to say is don't give up. Don't think I've tried this for a week or two weeks and oh, it's not working on me, I'm not gonna do it anymore. You can't, you've probably got a sluggish metabolism, your body's not used to this. Give so it a go, give it at least a month. And all my clients have found out, usually within three weeks, boom, the weight just starts 
falling off and they love mixing it up. As I've said in previous videos, my clients love mixing it up and some days doing 16, some days pushing it out to 18, occasionally doing a 20, 24. Play around with it because the, the more you get the benefits, the more you'll want to keep trying intermittent fasting and you'll just see how incredible intermittent fasting is. I am in my 50s and I feel fantastic and I want you to feel fantastic too. So please try intermittent fasting. Dementia and Alzheimer's can be prevented. So start intermittent fasting now, especially if you're a woman in your 50s, because we are probably at the most risk of developing um, Alzheimer's and dementias in our 60s. So it's not too late. As I said, you've got that 10 year window. Jump into it now and start intermittent fasting and stop dementia and stop Alzheimer's and live a long, healthy and happy life. So as we now know, dementia and Alzheimer's is optional. It should be a rare disease. So start intermittent fasting today and look after your brain and make sure that you are not one of those 153 million that the WHO are predicting will help Alzheimer's by 2050. I'm Gabrielle Amies. I am your personal intermittent fasting coach and mentor. So please subscribe, like and share this with other people so they can learn the incredible benefits of intermittent fasting too. I have spent the best part of my life studying natural health and I have recently returned from four months of undergoing extensive detox and wellness retreats and research in India and Sri Lanka. Please subscribe, like my videos, write comments and share so you can feel amazing in your 50s as I do too. And remember, the only bad fast is the fast that didn't happen. Looking fabulous at 50 has never been easier with intermittent fasting. So subscribe to my channel and let me show you how.